Hey, what's up everyone? It's Bennett Profixer, and today on the bench I got an iPad Air 1 charge port. Uh, these are kind of intimidating to do um, at first glance, but they're actually really, really easy. They're kind of like the PS4 um, HDMI port. You know, it all seems kind of difficult, but really it's a pretty simple repair if you follow some pretty easy steps. Um, I think the most difficult part is getting it out of the frame, or getting the motherboard out of the frame, um, because it's actually adhered down uh, with uh, actually some pretty long strips of adhesive, and so that makes it kind of difficult to get out and uh, kind of an awkward uh, thing to pull off. Uh, that, as well as pulling the glass off. So if you're doing a screen repair with a charge port, it's pretty easy, but if you're having to pull off a good digitizer, that's kind of where it becomes a little bit hard. Um, but once you get your motherboard out, flip it over like I have, and remove that black tape, apply flux, and then now use your iron and put some low melt on the pads. This is the same iron, the Hakko FX88, or 888, um, that I used for the HDMI on the PS4. And so uh, um, it's got that tip on there, it's like two or two and a half millimeter wide. Uh, pretty large tip, but it uh, covers just about all the bottom of these uh, contact points on this uh, charge port, which makes it really nice. The heat transfer is really good, um, which comes in handy whenever you're using the low melt with this particular port, because uh, you don't want to um, underheat the board because it won't make it hot enough that you can actually pull the the flex cable off without it ripping the pads. You want it to get very very hot and um, and this helps to transfer a lot of that heat and to get that low melt where it needs to go. And so you see here it's already loose um, and on camera it's kind of hard to you know position my hand so I wasn't bumping into the uh, into the camera and everything like that. Um, but um, but go ahead and grab it and you have to hold it down, you have to hold the motherboard down with one hand as you you know kind of pull up with the other because the flex cable is still glued down. It's got a like some really gummy adhesive holding it onto the motherboard. Um, so that is a little bit difficult to determine uh, but just using isopropyl alcohol it pulls that adhesive right off and then as well it cleans up all your old flux. At this point add some more flux and you're going to want to remove all of the low melt. You don't want any of the low melt on this charge port whenever you reassemble it because it will compromise the strength of the solder joints. And so what I'm doing here, I'm taking my braid and I'm cleaning my solder tip, uh, making sure that there's no low melt or anything like that on there. And then I'm going to snip that braid off. And when I bring that braid back, it's going to be clean. My soldering iron tip is going to be clean as well. And then I can properly remove the excess low melt that's still on the pads. And this is very important to do. You know, don't leave that on there and run your soldering iron over it to smooth out all those uh, pads. You want to actually make sure you remove all of it. And uh, that's a very important step. Or else you're going to install this back in your iPad and it's going to end up failing. Um, you know, possibly hours or days or weeks later, but it, it will definitely fail if there's low milled on there. It does not hold very well. Uh, so once again, clean up the uh, soldering area with some isopropyl alcohol and uh, this is just some 99% using a regular q-tip and cleaning up all the excess flux and so this next part here I'm actually going to um, apply some flux to the pads and then um, we're going to put a little bit of solder on those pads to prepare them for the charge port now the solder that I'm using is a 60-40 mixture um, it's pretty standard stuff. It's you know just about what everybody uses. Um, but uh, go ahead and add some of it to your actual soldering tip, and then you can lightly drag over the uh, contacts there and uh, put some of that solder actually onto the board itself. And if your pads are bridging, it could be one of two things. It could be that you don't have enough flux, or that you don't have enough heat. Um, and so after you've you know gone back and forth on the board or on those contacts one or two times kind of up and down it should heat up enough that they start to flow properly you can actually slide your soldering iron like I was in line with each of those small pads and uh, it'll help that uh, solder to deep bridge if you're still having issues uh, once again clean it up and then add some flux and, and actually after I added the flux I realized that I didn't clean it up as well as I should um, so I'm coming really with a with a q-tip with a little bit of alcohol in there and uh, just be careful you don't want to mix that alcohol in with all your flux um, but it should dry up pretty pretty quickly if uh, you get in the wrong spots 
but uh, at this point we're going to take the new charge port and lay it on top and if you look right up by my pointer finger on my left hand you'll see a little window on the charge port and then you can see that little gold contact on the other side of the charge port or on the actual logic board there was no little alignment dot um, I guess that uh, you know somehow came off during soldering um, which could happen it's a really small piece um, but if you do find that that's happened um, line it up the best that you can you know using you know all the other pins that are there like those uh, little contact dots on the back of the board so that you can line your charge board up you want to make sure that you get it completely completely straight um, once you're straight and you know it is go ahead and tack down one side and on the other side you'll do the same thing and the way you're doing this is you have your soldering iron that you've added added solder to and then you're just going to once again lightly drag it down all of those solder pads there and what this will do since you have a little bit of solder actually on the logic board that we added earlier there are little tiny holes in the flex cable that allow solder to pass through what you want to have happened is that the solder from beneath actually reaches up to the solder on top and vice versa so that they become one piece and um, and here you know once again I was moving the soldering iron in line with each of those soldering pads making sure that none of them are debridging or bridged or anything like that and if they're bridged then debridge them but as you can see here it's pretty uh, pretty straight uh, but hopefully this helped you out and uh, and you can have a successful iPad Air 1 charge port replacement but subscribe to our channel for more videos and uh, and stay tuned for some next ones that we're gonna be launching but you'll have a great one